Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is, Real Late Hot 97. My name is Peter Rosenberg and one artist I've been playing uh, a lot recently and, and for many years, but really a lot recently. Got a new project called Centers and Saints with Buck Wild. Rashid Chappelle is on the show. What up, Rashid? What up, Rosenberg? Salute, salute. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, man. I'm over here enjoying this virgin coquito myself, man. But Well, by the way, and off the air, we just had a great, just a great comment from you where you just said, and blew up the room you were in when you said yo this joint's better than egg dog and people are like yo you know this was better than egg dog son yeah i'm late to the party <laughs> no i only had it for a few a first time for a few i don't know five eight, seven years ago whenever i got comfortable up here and i was like yo this coquito ish hold on this is different absolutely um so where are you originally from rasheed i'm from forsaken new jersey project city um 07055 aspen place projects to be exact um it's a small city, probably about 13 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. So we was influenced by a lot of the stuff coming from New York, plus our own influences in Jersey. What is there a scene to Passaic? Like what does hip hop, like when you think of your hip hop upbringing specific to where you grew up, um, what was it like? Tell me about it. Um, you know, we actually had a few artists that actually came from Passaic. You may have heard of uh, K Def and Larry O. Uh, they're on some real live ish absolutely absolutely k def is uh from from Passaic, new jersey larry o is from hackensack which is not too far away um the audio two um kevin um he, he audio k special k part himself his father actually earned, owned a grocery store across the street from our projects as well as the barber shop so we was always oh, wow. pass off tapes to him there was another group by the name of world renown that was signed to warner Brothers. Oh. Yeah. Funky introduction of how nice I am. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I grew up in the same building. I, my grandmother was in the same building as Seven Sean, uh, who who was uh, half of that group. So we had a, we had a very vibrant scene uh, in the '90s. People was definitely very active. And um, so can you tell me? So what? So what happened to to World Renown? Like, I'm curious with groups like that. They came out, put out a single. Like the joint was dope, and underground DJs played it. I'm sure they got a nice little advance, but like what, what happened to cats like that? I mean, it's not my story to tell. Okay. Uh, hopefully, Fair. Hopefully. But were they around? These are cats you'd see around? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm still in contact with both of them actually. So wow. hopefully, you know, um, if I have anything to do with it, if, if there's anything that I can add on to the legacy that they built, I'd actually like to see them come back out, you know, uh, because the music is still fire. Oh, well, listen, maybe that's a conversation we can have sometime. Um, Absolutely. So um, I guess I first started getting familiar with you and um, hearing what you were doing maybe 10 years ago, sort of. It, let, let me put it this way. It was definitely a different scene when you first came out than where things are now. So tell me about what that middle ground was like for you as an artist, because now you're sort of part of a thriving underground scene, whereas before you were sort of like, stuck between eras it may have felt like uh, tell me if that feels right at all and how things have, have changed it almost felt like i was stuck between worlds because it was either the independent which got no love from anywhere probably other than your show um and sirius xm and it was just completely mainstream so there wasn't the crossover of artists like we have now with like Griselda and rick ross and freddie gibbs and alchemist like those things weren't taking place at that time uh, I mean, Planet Asian Alchemist was definitely doing things out in Cali, but the the where we are right now, it's everything is meshed together. So even on the even on the uh, commercial side, those acts are independent to a certain degree. So it all kind of merges together. And this, what we do now, what we've always done is as close as you can get to the actual street. So it has that authentic authenticity to it that people on the major labels kind of want to you know bring over to their brand. So I think it's a great time, actually. Now, does it feel like a big moment seeing the Freddie Gibbs Alchemist Grammy nomination for hip hop best hip hop album? I mean, it's a yes and no because I, I really think that we don't need those type of accolades to prove how good our music is and how impactful we are in the culture. But for the culture, I think it's a huge moment because that was an album that wasn't 
from the sonics of it wasn't chasing any type of commercial success. They just got together and made a fire album. So, um, you know, to see Alfredo get nominated for a Grammy is like applause to both Alchemist and uh, Freddie Gibbs. I think they did something amazing with that album. Um, we're going to play a couple of joints from your album with Buck Wild. How'd the relationship with Buck Wild uh, start? I met Buck um, probably right around the time he started playing my music. Um, Kenny Dope introduced me to Lord Finesse, who pretty much opened me up to the Digging in the Crates crew. And another producer had told Buck about the music. And um, Buck was like, yo, this kid is dope. And so we've just been like, you know, during the whole album we did with Mayhem, we were talking and just things were going on. We just time-wise never locked in. But once we locked in, it didn't take long to create this album. We was definitely in the zone with this one. All right, we're going to play a couple of joints right now off the project. Sinners and Saints, you can stream it anywhere. Rashid Chappelle from Passaic, New Jersey with Buck Wild. It's a fantastic project all the way through. We're going to have more of Rashid Chappelle next as we sip this Coquito on a holiday Sunday night on Real Late on Hot 97. All right, as we continue on, Real Late Hot 97, uh, Rashid Chappelle in the building. We're talking about his new project with Buck Wild. And I've been thinking about, you know, the names. We talked about the Freddie Gibbs Alchemist uh, nomination. And when you think about the names that are important to this current new underground movement, um, you think about the name Rock Marcy. So I wanted to pose to you, like, is, is how important is Rock Marcy? Is there anyone as important to the to this area of the game as Rock Marcy is? I mean, just aesthetically, sonically, uh, his impact. I don't think there's anyone. Uh, maybe an MF Doom. Um, you definitely could throw a Sean Price in there. Um, but as far as where it's moving and the direction that is moving, um, Rock Mars, Mount Rock. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, Mount Rock. Uh, Marcy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's on that Rushmore of uh, independence and, um, you know, underground acts that have definitely pushed the culture forward. Um, now you're, you're also something I like about your music is it is uh, it's grown man rap. I mean, you live a grown man life, take care of a family. Um, you were saying uh, earlier that you don't drink at all. Um so what, what is life like for Rashid Chappelle out when you're not in the studio? Take us through a day in the life. <laughs> oh, man. Um, if that, I should be in the gym more. That's where Rashid Chappelle. We do. We should all be in the gym more. You know, but um, for the most part, man, this is, um, this is it. Like, this is, this is my nine to five. So it's a lot of listening to music. It's a lot of um, spending time with my son. Um, is a lot of reconnecting with uh, people, places, and things that I thought were, you know, behind me, but are really a part of my story. One of the reasons why I don't drink is both of my parents were, you know, addicted to crack cocaine. And that's something that I try to stay away from as far as including into my life. And alcohol was something that they indulged in as well. Yes. So, you know, um, it's, it's really about being a grown man, you know, so you can't rap like this if you're not living this lifestyle. So it's not something that I strive to be in my rhymes. It's actually something that I strive to be, you know, on a day to day. So, you know, I'm listening to uh, all types of music. I'm listening to beats, uh, battling my son about who got the better sneakers. He think he dressed better than me. How old's your son? He just turned 17. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So this is, this is getting into the real ish talk. Oh, area absolutely. absolutely but he's an artist as well graphic artist oh, wow. um, and a designer so encouraging him to be an entrepreneur bringing him around people um that i know that are in the business on the fashion side that could assist him so it's a, um it's a blessing man like i i take every day as, as a new learning experience and i treat it as such does he think you're nice I don't think so, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't I don't think like, but the beauty of having him as a son is that like he's into the music. So like he put me up on Don Tolliver. He like, he's tired of me playing Igor. Like he gets like, come on dad, play something else. But I'm like, yo, this album is incredible. You know, so he, 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 he keeps me, uh, he keeps my ears to, you know, the things that are a little bit more different than what I would normally gravitate towards. So I definitely applaud him for that. Well, you mentioned the Igor album. What are some of the other, what what are some of the other albums that you listen to a lot that are recent uh, in hip hop, and maybe would surprise people a little bit about what you're rocking with? You know, it's funny. I, you probably hear this a lot. I don't really listen to a lot of rap music. 
Um, but the last, which like, is probably why you like Igor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Igor, it was a great, but it's just a great album. It's a great like, album. I think it uh, defies genre. Um, I forget the guy's name. Uh, I, I can't think of his name. Uh, as soon as we finish this conversation, I'm sure it'll come to me. But he's kind of like a, a mix between a Don Tolliver and a um, and a um, Tyler the Creator. Mm. Um, I listen to Nirvana. I listen to um, a lot of Fleetwood Mac. I think they're incredible. One of my greatest bands of all time. I listen to um, a lot of my parents' music. You know what I mean? So you might catch me listening to the Commodores, mm. riding around listening to the stylistics, you know, just something to kind of put me in a different headspace and then try to take the way that they crafted their music and apply it to how I do mine. Did you spend a lot of time uh, with the last two um, Mac Miller albums, Swimming and, and Circles? I've never heard a Mac Miller album. Whoa! I, I know I've I've never heard a Mac Miller album. I, I I someone just recently posed that question to me and told me they sent me you would definitely like this album. Like you have to listen to this. Well, album. I'm trying to decide. So I, I wanted. I wonder now with you being the kind of music lover you are. I think you should listen a little bit in order. So his old albums, um, like his first couple of mixtapes and albums were cool. Okay. But it was very much just like, yo, he's a he's a really solid rapping white boy rapper. Like that's just, and he was, you know, the first thing he ever got really popping for was that he rhymed on Lord Finesse's beat for yeah. him for the game, right? So while it was controversy, controversy, which is for him and Finesse's history, really to me, it made me be like, oh, you're rapping on Lord Finesse. Okay, let me let me see what you're about here, right? Okay. And as the years went on, then he moved to LA in his second project when he started hanging out with Tyler and those guys and Vince, his sound started getting weirder and he was hanging with Alchemist and he started getting weirder. And then by the time he gets to swimming, he just dropped, if you, like, if you loved Igor, swimming's just a musical masterpiece. It's just okay. like... It's so I just think you should at least skim through the rap stuff because his rapping is dope. I mean, he's a solid rapper. You should go skim through his rap hits and then settle in and rock swimming front to back and just ride around to it. I'm not sure. I got to check my phone and see if that was the album that was sent to me. It's the best. It's the best body of work, but it depends because if the person who sent it to you is a super rap head, it might have not been the one. If it's someone who's just a general music head, it would probably be the one. Yeah, um, it's morose though i mean swimming and circles they're both they're both a little on the like morose and, and heavier side okay uh, but they're if you're into just it sounds like where you are like grown up just music yeah i'm just into music man. yo and then the divine feminine album actually before i skip past that that divine feminine album as far as hip-hop genre sort of sex albums okay it's one of the best just like deep into sexuality and love of women. Like it's a really, that's a great project too. That has Kendrick, Anderson, Pac, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, we should do this off the air sometime. Yeah, yeah, we're but but, I, but uh, you, you'd, enjoy, you'd enjoy him. Um, so what, what are your plans like moving forward? Like we are entering this different time where music sort of dropped differently. You have people dropping a couple times a year. You have cats like, our guy Flea Lord dropping once a month. I mean, you have people doing all types of different things. What is the plan for Rashid Chappelle moving forward? Um, the plan is definitely to be more active. Um, definitely not wait as long as I did between the first project and the second project. Um, but that was a lot of due to touring as well as working on other projects with Kenny and Raheem Devon and other people. Um, but I definitely have things lined up for, for, for 2021. Uh, a few things that I'm very excited to give to the world and, you know, working with Spech uh, on my last album before this. I, 38 I, Spech. Absolutely. Yes. 38 Spech Trust. Um, watching how he puts his calendar together and how everything works. And, you know, because at the end of the day, I just want to be an artist, you know, but in the climate that we're in, you got to be a little bit more than just an artist in order to really, you know, garner the attention of the fan, like you said this has been um, a busy year for me. And the reason it's been busy, because it's kind of just been like a reintroduction to let everybody know that I'm here. 
and set it up for 2021. So we definitely got some projects in the work that, you know, I, I believe are gonna make a lot of noise. And, um, you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to kind of still be here and people still care, you know, that I'm doing this 10 years later and um, still making quality music and, and music that, um, you know, pushes the envelope forward as well. And you have a cool opportunity to continue to build this thing out. And before we know it, you may turn around and shows are back. And then there's another revenue stream and you get to get back out in front of people and spread the word more. Um, that You have the physical product sitting behind you right now. Wh where can people get the physical Sinners and Saints project? You can shop uh, getondown.com, shop getondown.com. You can get CD, vinyl, uh, digital everywhere. Um, but we definitely got uh, merch coming as well, as well as some uh, other little add-ons that we got for the people out there. Now, how often do people ask you if you're related to Dave Chappelle? Um, all, every day. And I say yes, if it lets me get into some place. <laughs> Absolutely. Dave Chappelle is my cousin. Have you ever connected with Dave Chappelle? No, but that's something that I'm trying to do. So it's funny that you say that. Like I said, we got some things lined up for 2021. You know what? Say less. Are you work? Are you work? Are you already? I don't get in the, get in the way if you're already working on it. But say less and let you do your thing. All right, say less. Let me let me let me pass along some things right here. We got to make that happen. Appreciate it. Because not only do you share a name, but he would love your music. So I think so too. I, I know so. I know so. It's, I don't think I would love Ohio though. But I think, <laughs> but yeah, but you love like his little his little house and, and farm area right there. That's a fact. That is a fact. That's a fact. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, um, continue to be safe uh, during this COVID craziness. And uh, thank you for all the great music, man. Uh, I, you've really you've been at the forefront. You were very early in the game for for kind of getting things going in this genre, which is now getting filled up with a lot of talented people. So uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you for giving us this me specifically and our culture this platform to let this music be heard by the masses man like you're one of the last outlets out there um, and so i definitely give a salute to you publicly privately <laughs> i appreciate it yeah. i am honored to i'm honored to have the the slot to still do it it's amazing so um throwbacks coming up next go check centers and saints and all rashid Chappelle music appreciate you bro peace peace yo